I'm often asked uh, what other methods of addressing psychological distress can be used if uh, pharmaceutical uh, drugs um, are not prescribed. And uh, my simple answer is good therapy. And in particular, uh, the kind of therapy that, that I use and that I work with with people, uh, mainly because I've seen it uh, achieve such profound changes in people. Uh, because really, uh, managing psychological distress uh, is, is part of life. And some people uh, are better at it than others without help or support. And a lot of that has to do with how they've been brought up parented or how much they've been affected by uh, the culture around them, not their genetics. I'm a firm believer that uh, human beings can learn how to manage their psychological distress, which is really a part of life. We are not going to be happy our whole lives, but again, we're also not going to be unhappy our whole lives, even though that is hard to sell to somebody who is depressed or who has had a hard life of trauma. Even severe trauma, even trauma that causes psychosis or uh, gets you diagnosed with uh, the nasty labels that psychiatry hands out to people who are in severe psychological distress like schizophrenia or chronic anxiety or any of these things that are supposedly genetic. Uh, I firmly uh, believe, mainly because I've done the research, that there is no proof that psychological distress is a genetic disorder along the lines of purely medical disorders uh, like diabetes, like uh, heart disease, and things like that. And this really goes against most of the beliefs of my profession, but I have done the work and the research and I haven't found any, any proof, as I've said before, that uh, psychological distress is genetic or that drugs are the answer. So, when people ask me, well, if you aren't going to be using medications, what do you do? And what I say is that what you do is get good therapy and my particular uh, approach involves uh, the body as well as the mind. I actually don't separate them because where is the mind but in the body? And what is the brain but just another, and in my opinion, very overrated organ of the body? Um, while we elevate the brain to uh, the highest status of controlling our body, mind over matter, I prefer to think of uh, our body and our mind as being one, especially because the brain is simply the largest node of the nervous system, which is all through our body. And as I found in my training, in my personal experience, as well as my professional experience, that when you start uh, feeling how you are holding your body, the very musculature um, of your body, how you carry yourself through your day, as you learn how to sense your body more and more, you will find various ways that you are uh, tight or blocked or simply overusing the muscles of your body such that you uh, contract. And as you learn how to lessen that contraction and expand, memories, emotions, feelings will come out of those parts of your body that you've been holding so tight. And the miraculous thing is, is that that can be worked with, with psychotherapy, and in uh, relation to your body, such that the things that you felt were unchangeable about yourself, including your level of psychological distress, become very uh, malleable and able to be changed. So in the working that I have done in over 20 years with people, um, I have seen people uh, come alive, first by uh, no longer needing to rely on their medications, which is one level of happiness that um, is amazing to see, and then people going on to actually improve their ability to manage stress in their life and go on to become healthier individuals than they ever imagined. 
and that is through the, the particular approach of somatic body-oriented therapy that I do.